Greetings. Hello. My name is Chris McGahan. My wife, Mary Ann, or I should say Mary Ann and I, uh, have a ministry called McGahan Peluso Ministries based out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, here in the United States of America. We're glad to have you join us for prayer today. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just uh, uh, come endeavoring uh, to repent. Uh, repent of all of our sins, repent of all of our iniquities. Lord God, to we're in desperate need. It is not, it is, it's not business as usual, uh, not only in the United States, but everywhere in the world. We're in, in critical times, just like Nineveh was facing a critical time. They had 40 days before they were going to be destroyed. And they turned to God with one accord and they repented in sackcloth and ashes. And Father God, we, we don't have much time. The time on the earth is, is, is short. We've got serious things, calamities coming upon the earth. And of course, you forecasted that in the Bible. You said in the, in the end times, the latter days, men's hearts will be failing them for fear for the things that they see that's coming upon them. And Lord God, we as the church, we know that we're not appointed unto wrath. But Lord God, we, we still seek you and we, we, we know that while we're not appointed unto your wrath, it's not going to be your wrath that comes down. It's, it's just it's judgment that's coming on the earth because of their wickedness. And we know, Lord God, that you're fully capable of preserving the righteous and at the same time that you're bringing judgment on wickedness and pulling down wicked systems and, and judging those things that are ungodly and so, Father, we come to you, and, uh, you know, the thought comes to me, uh, Abraham was out minding his own business one day, and and uh, uh, he didn't know it was God, but God walked up to him with a couple of men, a couple of angels, and uh, he said, uh, the, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah has come up to me, and it's, and it's, um, uh, they're seeing the, the, it's great and because of their sin is very grievous he said i'm going to go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which has come to me and if not i will know and the men turned their faces from this and went towards sodom but abraham stood here yet before the lord and uh so god told abraham what he was fixing to do and and uh abraham began to intercede before God and he said uh, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city will thou wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein <clears throat> and so you know whether you realize it or not uh, God's people whether you as God's people realize it or not, our presence makes a difference in this earth. The Bible says that we are the salt. And we are in salt, and not only does it add flavor, but salt, especially in those days, the days that Jesus was talking about, about salt being good for something, uh, it acted as a preservative. And so our job is to intercede and repent before God to, uh, and, and try to... Uh, preserve uh, things. We don't want uh, society as it is to be preserved. We want society to change. We want to bring change to ungodliness in, in people. And, and we're not, and I don't want to imply that we're going to get the world fixed up and everything's going to be right and perfect. And, and that's, that's not the way that it's going to be. The Bible uh, can, is clear that that's not the way it's going to be, but we can make a difference. And so God began to intercede. And he said, God, if there's at least 50 righteous in the city, would you spare it? And God said, you know, I'll, I'll spare it. He said, but what if there lacks, just lacks five? And he didn't say 45. He said, if it lacks five of the 50. He said, well, if it lacks five of the 50, I will spare that. And so, Father, we just come to you, Lord, and we just put you in remembrance, Lord God, of, of the nations and the earth. And, Lord God, that there are uh, righteous people in all of these nations. And, Father, we pray, uh, we, we stand up and take the place as Abraham, the father of the faithful. We follow his example and we ask you, we intercede, Lord God, to spare our nations, Lord God, not let them be over 
overthrown with wickedness and and uh and stuff lord god uh in in destruction we pray lord god that you would spare it for the sake of the righteous and being emboldened to the fact that god said he would spare it for 50 and then he would spare it for 45 um uh you know uh somebody i heard somebody say one time this is the first recorded jew job that's going down in history you know jews are recognized at, at haggling and getting a good price on something and uh so that's what abraham did he was jewing god down and he said well okay how about how about 40 and god said well i'll, I'll spare it for 40. and then he said well um how about uh, how about 30? If 30 be found there, he said, I'll spare it for 30. And he said, Behold, now I've taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there should be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. You know, <laughs> God bless his heart. He's so sweet. Man, he, he's not a hard case at all. He, he Just like in Jonah's case, Jonah knew that God was predisposed to show mercy and kindness. And look how easy God is going down. It's not, God didn't have to go around and kick around and gripe and moan and groan and say, man, this is hard, this is ridiculous. Uh, I'm No, I'm not gonna do it for 30. Uh, you, you can forget about asking me for 20 and, and haggle some more and finally got him down to 20. No, that's not the way it worked out. He said, well, you do it for 30? Sure. Will you do it for 20? Sure. And then I don't know, Abraham thought, well, surely, you know, I know a lot in his family is, uh, what, what was it, uh, five or six? And uh, he said, I, surely there's that many more. And he said, well, how about for 10? He said, I'll save it for 10. So Abraham thought, surely we're covered with that. And uh, he went down there and there wasn't even 10 righteous. And of course the city was destroyed, but yet in the midst of that judgment, God brought the righteous out. And that's what God wants to do today. And and we we are, we're praying, uh, and we know that judgment, uh, before the move of God to come, there's got to be judgment beginning at the house of God. And so, Father, as part of the house of God, we repent of our wickedness. We repent of our evil ways, Lord God. We ask you to for, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our missteps, our misdeeds, our shortcomings, our just blatant wrongdoings. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. Just forgive us for doing wrong. Forgive us for sinning overtly and covertly. Lord God, uh, we ask for mercy upon us, Lord God. And those, Lord God, that that don't get right, we, we acknowledge and we accept that judgment must come to the house of God first. And then, Lord God, we ask that you give people in the world a chance to uh, return to you. Lord God, deal with their hearts. Lord God, we pray that you would deal with their hearts. We pray, Lord God, that men and women that are in authority in nations around the world, Lord God, who are involved in, in our elbow deep in wickedness and unrighteousness, we pray, Lord God, that you would speak to their heart and, Lord God, that they would be convicted of their sin. And we pray, Lord God, that they would turn. And, Lord God, if they don't turn, we pray, Father, for judgment to fall because, Lord, we have, we need the righteous to be preserved. We need godliness to be preserved in our world and in our nations. We ask you, God, to, to do the work of of turning our hearts we pray lord god that our hearts would turn toward you and i pray lord that you, you said in james you know james chapter 4 verse 8 you said draw nigh unto me and i will draw nigh unto you so we draw nigh unto you this day lord god we draw nigh lord god with with a repentant heart we repent lord god of our lack of affection towards you lord god we repent of of missing the mark we repent lord god of coming to you for what we can get out of you instead of just coming to you for your presence lord god that's probably one of the biggest things i judge myself for lord god forgive me lord god for coming to you for things and and not coming to you for just your presence lord god i i want your presence more than i want things Lord God, and I want the, the, the church to, to want that. I just choose in my heart that that's the way I'm going to be. I have the right to make that decision as an act of my will. 
So, Father, we come to you, Lord God, this day and this very hour that all across this world as people in 95, over 95 nations of the world are praying at this very minute, at this very second, Lord God, we make a decision that we want you and your presence more than we want what you can give us. Lord God, we turn our hearts towards you, Lord God. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, of seeking the things that you can give us uh, in place of your presence. We would rather have your presence. I've read the Smith Wigglesworth said, I would rather have this, the had the anointing of God on me for 10 minutes than on the, the world with a fence around it. And so, because he valued the presence of God. And uh, I value the presence of God. And that's what I want to happen in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would be the same way that you would value the presence of God and, and turn to God with all your heart and repent of anything and everything that's wrong in your life. God loves you. In Jesus' name, blessings on you. Amen.